This is Bishop Dale Broder. Thank you so much for joining our YouTube channel today. If this is a blessing to you, I want to encourage you to like it and then click the subscribe button and then turn on notification. Hit that little notification bell so that you never ever miss another one of our videos. And then if you're in the Metro Atlanta area on a Sunday, check out one of our exhilarating services at 8.30 a.m., 11 a.m., or 6 o'clock p.m. Be seated. Well, our scripture lesson today comes from the fifth chapter, a very familiar passage of scripture, fifth chapter of Matthew, verse 14 through 16 from the contemporary English version. Notice there these words. These are the words of Jesus. You are like light for the whole world. A city built on top of a hill cannot be hidden, and no one would light a lamp and put it under a clay pot. A lamp is placed on a lampstand where it can give light to everyone in the house. Make your light shine so that others will see the good that you do and will praise your Father in heaven. I'm speaking today simply from the subject lighthouse. Lighthouse, light house. Isn't it interesting here that Jesus says to us, he instructs us to let our light shine. I like how the contemporary English version says, make your light shine. Make it shine. Not just let it shine, but make it shine. Make opportunities for it to shine. Make opportunities for your light to shine so that people can see your good works and not praise you so that you become egotistical and egocentric, but so that it will cause people to say, you know what, I thank God for the God in this person that moved on them to, to purchase groceries for me. May they see your good works and then glorify the Father. Because sometimes when your good works actually are manifested to people, they are actually an expression or manifestation of an answered prayer on somebody's behalf. Somebody has been praying, Lord, I need this. Lord, I need a scholarship for my child. Lord, I need money for this. I need, Lord, I need a door open for that. Lord, I need influence. I need a word put in to, to get me this job. And so Sometimes your good works then become the answer from God to somebody's prayer. And when they see that God is using you to answer something that you prayed for, and, and you realize that this person was the resource, but God was the source. The person is the resource, but God is the source. Never get that conflicted. The, don't ever confuse the source with the resource. We are human beings, we are resources, God is the source. Always point people to look to the source. We are not the source. No person, uh, Jeff Bezos doesn't have enough resources to fill everybody's needs. Because he's not a source, he's a resource. We are resources in the hand of God and we're designed to be lights. And Jesus said, make your light shine. Make your light shine, let your light shine. Create opportunities for your light to shine. Create opportunities for your light to shine. You have to understand that in biblical times, uh, there was never an electrical source of, for light. But light always came from a source of fire, whether it was from the sun or whether it was from a lantern that had fire in it. And so we primarily use uh, light or lanterns for maybe three different reasons. We use this fire. When we light a fire, it, uh, a fire is, is, is lit for light. A fire is lit for heat. And a fire is lit for ambiance. Sometimes it's, it's not that you're trying to see anything. You know, when a person is having a romantic evening, you go to a fine restaurant, they have a, they have a candle on the table. Not a hundred watt fluorescent bulb. It, it's, a, it's a candle. It, it's not for you to be able to see because you can barely see in these dark restaurants. It's for ambiance. And sometimes the light that we carry is just for ambiance. Other times we light a fire, it's for heat. Other times that we light a fire, it's for light to light the way. So we use it for light, we use it for heat, we use it for ambiance. But the wonderful thing, Jesus calls us to be a lighthouse. 
And that's why he says, let your light shine. Let your light shine. Make your light shine. Make your light to shine. Do some things that actually make your light to shine. Let your light shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. That's what we do. A lighthouse sends out a beacon of light to warn or to guard ships at sea. Now I want you to notice that. That's what a lighthouse does. It sends out a beacon of light to warn or to guide. To warn or to guide. Now we're supposed to be a lighthouse to warn or to guide. Now listen, the only reason that a lighthouse is there on the water for all of those that are participating in maritime activities, the only reason that the lighthouse is there, it is to warn or to guide ships so that they do not crash into the shore. It sends out a beacon of light. It emits light to say, this way, go this way. It's letting them know there's a danger that is here and it is emitting a light to send signals to them to let them know there's a problem in the earth. We're supposed to be lighthouses. The world is filled with darkness. Their little lives, your sons, your daughters, your nieces, your nephews, they're walking around in darkness. Your grandchildren are in darkness because they're looking for a lighthouse. Something that sends out a beacon of light to them that says this is the way. Or that highlights something and says there's danger over here. There are rocks over here. You're about to come into the shore. You're going to get stuck over here. You're about to go down a wrong way. And they couldn't see that they were about to get in a, in a bad marriage because the lighthouse was out Jesus said let your light shine so that people would be able to see your good works and then glorify the father who's in heaven and and our lighthouse have been a dim flicker at best and he said make your light shine because there's so much danger there are too many people experiencing shipwreck on our watch shipwreck I, I, there are too many old folks that have gone shipwreck and they need lighthouses they need lighthouses I mean where grandmama's out there in the club with their grandchildren the lighthouse has lost its light it, it somehow they, they lost the guiding light uh, there used to be a, a soap opera years ago called the guiding light Jesus is the guiding light and, and and while Jesus was here he said I'm the light of the world but when he left, he turned to us and he said to us in Matthew chapter 5, you are the light of the world. Make your light shine. You know why? Because there are a lot of lives that are in danger. They don't know the way. They are confused. The definitions and truth has become relative to people. But Jesus is the way. There is an absolute truth. There is a light that shines with clarity. And the light comes and the light does a couple of things. It guides and it warns. It guides and it warns. And it's showing you, hey, you come close to me if you want to. Come close to this thing if you want to. There's a cliff over here. That's, you're getting ready to cascade over something and fall into something that you're not going to have the power to get out yourself. So it's there to warn you. It's there to guide you. It's there to guide and to warn. To guide and to warn. Your life is called to be a lighthouse. You're called to guide and to warn. To guide and to warn. To guide and to warn. It's a blessing. A lighthouse is a blessing. May I say this to you? The oldest lighthouse that we have, uh, it, it, the first one that was built, it was built, it's called uh, the Pharaoh of Alexandria in Egypt. It was built in, in the third century BC as a guiding light. Did you know that the United States of America has more lighthouses than any country in the world? Maybe it is to say to us here in America that we're supposed to be lighthouses to other people. Isn't it amazing that how people look at America and we send our culture around the world and we have contaminated the world with a polluted light. Sending dimness and darkness over the world. And we've got more lighthouses in America than any country in the world. We've got more lighthouses. And Jesus is speaking to his church. He's talking to the church now, not to the world. He's talking to the church and said, be the light. The world is in darkness. I don't blame sinful folks for doing sinful things. That's what they do. That's their nature. They're in darkness. That's what they do. In Luke chapter 15, 
Jesus gives a parable of a woman that had ten coins and she lost one of them. And she asked for two things. She said, bring me a light and a broom. And the Bible says she took a light. She lit a, light, a lantern, a lamp. And a broom. You know why? Because the light will do something. The light will expose. It'll expose the dirt that needs to be clean. And then the broom is to sweep it. God's not just going to turn a light on you just to expose you. He's going to send a cleansing agent. That's why there's the blood of Jesus. If he exposes the sin, he's willing to forgive it. If he exposes the sin, he's just trying to show us this is what you need. I'm putting a light on this thing. This is not right, but here's the way. So he brings both the light and the broom so that he exposes the dirt and then he brings a mechanism to cleanse it. Why, why, why? Anybody, any fool can point out a problem and most do. But they don't bring the cleansing agent. We need the broom. Show me how to clean this life up. Show me how to clean this life up. Bring me some grace here. I, I, I need grace. I need mercy. I need teaching and understanding and undergirding for my life. Bring it to me. Bring it to me. Don't just show me what's wrong. Show me how to clean it up. Is anybody listening to me today? I pray that you're hearing the word of God that didn't come, uh, uh, you know, sugar-coated and, and, and filled with sweet things that the ears just want to hear. Jesus is saying, I'm looking for light in the, in the earth because it's full of darkness, and I'm looking for my church to be the light. Let the light shine from the lighthouse. Shine, shine, shine. I used to open up my messages many years ago, and I used to declare, shine on, on me. Shine on me. Let the light from the lighthouse let it shine. Shine on me. Let's go on. We got to move on. But there is a light that is designed, I'm just telling you, to shine on you. Uh, because the world is full of darkness. And when people get in darkness, they do freaky things. And so we need light, light, light. We're supposed to be the guiding light for the lost. Isaiah chapter 60, notice this. Notice what happens when light is there. Arise and shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. See, darkness covers the earth, and thick darkness is over the peoples. But the Lord rises upon you, and his glory appears over you. Nations will come to your light, to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look about you. All assemble and come to you. Your sons come from afar and your daughters are carried on the hip. They're coming to the light. People have a tendency to move toward the light. God himself is light. In the tabernacle of the Old Testament, there was the outer court, the inner court, and in this secret place called the Holy of Holies. In the Holy of Holies, there were no candles because God himself was the light of that place. God is light. God is light. And, and, and I want you to realize this principle that God, light does not just come just to brighten a situation, but it comes to reveal what needs to be changed. Light does not come just to expose, to brighten a situation, make it all brighter. God didn't come to make you better. He came to make you right. It's not just about brightness. It's about correction. It's to reveal what needs to change. Notice this principle. Light precedes transformation. Light precedes transformation. Light precedes transformation. The Apostle Paul on the road to Damascus, he was blinded by a bright light. It preceded his transformation. I can't tell you the number of times when people, before something divine and supernatural happened in their life, they were filled with the light. Light is a biblical symbol of understanding. Understanding changes you. 
When you come into an understanding of things that you didn't understand before, you become changed. I want you to notice what Jesus did in Matthew chapter 4, verse 16 and 17. The people who sat in darkness have seen a great light. Notice this. And upon those who sat in the region and shadow of death, light has dawned. But notice this. And from that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, repent, change, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent and change, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand hand. He didn't just say that they have sat in darkness and now they've seen great light. The light exposes the need for change. And that's why then Jesus came with the message, repent, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at, is at hand. It was a command to change. And I want you to realize the apostle Paul was called to be an apostle, not to the Jews primarily, but to the Gentiles. Because the Gentiles were in darkness. The Gentiles were in darkness. Notice in Acts chapter 13, verse 46 and 47. Then Paul and Barnabas grew bold. Thank God for boldness. We need some boldness to be a witness for Jesus in the world. You need a boldness. You need a boldness. The world is bold with their sin. They're bringing it up in your face. They make no apologies about it. They're bold. It's time for the people of God to be lighthouses. Let your light shine. Let it shine. Let it shine with boldness and uh, unapologetically. And it says, and it was necessary that the word of God should be spoken to you first, talking to the Jewish community. But since you reject it and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life, behold, we turn to the Gentiles. Now, here's what this says to me is that oftentimes uh, rejection from one entity or one group is a redirection for God to expand you to an entire another entity that's actually bigger. Now notice this, for the Lord, verse 47, for so the Lord commanded us, I have set you as a light to the Gentiles, that you should be for salvation to the ends of the earth. I've set you as a light to the Gentiles. I've set you as a light to the Gentiles. The Gentiles were unsaved, barbaric people that had no understanding of Christ and his principles. And he says, I am sending you into a culture. Listen, church, we're at that time again. We're, we're just at the same time of the early church in the, in the book of Acts where people were pagans. They didn't have an understanding of God and they were living according to the dictates of their own flesh. We're back at that same time. And the hallmark of that season was boldness. Letting their light shine, declaring God's truth, not in a judgmental way, but in a compassionate way of saying, hey, 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 let's turn the light on and look at all of this mess in here. Look at all of this mess. You don't realize how dirty you are and how dirty the environment is until a light comes. When you sit in darkness, everything looks okay. Everything feels okay. Your sin is hidden. It is obscured. But when a light comes, it shows you the filth and the dirt that you were dealing with. You don't know that until you turn the light on. The light didn't put it there. It's only exposing what was already there. And the stuff that's killing us, the stuff that's killing us is not the stuff that we see. What destroys more homes in America than anything else is termites. You can't see them. And while people are trying to kill roaches, it's the termites that are tearing your house down. Are you aware that roaches eat termites? How dare you kill your own extermination? Roaches eat termites. Termites will tear your house down, but you don't see termites crawling across your floor at night. But they eat eating the frame. They will eat your house inside out. They destroy you. The, the, the stuff that you can't see. But once you expose it, my God, now you can do something about it. If you don't know the termites are present, you have no ability. The people that end up dying is by the stuff that's the silent killer. The silent killer is the biggest killer in the world. It's heart disease. It's a silent killer. It's a silent killer. You don't even realize that it's happening. A person can't feel themselves the moment that a, a malignant cell starts developing in their body. They can't feel that. It's microscopic. They're the little things. The little foxes spoil the vine. The little things, the little things, the little things. And so he's just telling us. But the apostle Paul said this in, in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 1. Follow my example as I follow the example of Christ. In other words, he, Paul said, follow me. Follow me as I follow Christ. 
Follow me as I follow Christ. Be a light. Be a light. Be the light that you wish to see in the world. Be the change that you wish to see in the world. Be the light. Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. He, he was saying, follow my example as I follow the example of Christ. This is very important. You don't just follow any two-legged human being off a cliff you follow them only to the extent of the truth that they are following Jesus Christ. If this is not the example of Christ, if this is not the character of Christ, you said, this is where I get off. You drink the Kool-Aid. If you want to drink the Kool-Aid, I love you and I thank you for everything you've laid in my life, but I'm not having any Kool-Aid. I'm going to live and declare the works of the Lord. Listen, if the bishop, if I ever got off track, don't follow me down here. You better say, I will follow you only as long as you're following Christ. And if that doesn't look like Jesus to me, I'm not on board with it. I'm not on board with it. Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. Follow my example as I follow the example of Christ. He's saying, be imitators of me as dear children as I imitate Christ. If I'm no longer imitating Christ, don't you imitate me. If a leader is not imitating Christ, don't imitate that leader. Don't you dare follow them. Don't, if Jesus didn't rob people of all of that money, if Jesus didn't have people all crazy about uh, materialism, if Jesus didn't do it, don't you do it. Don't follow any place that Jesus, that doesn't look like the example of Jesus. Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. Be the light. Be the light. Touch somebody and say, be the light. Be the light. Be the light. Be the light. And we need examples. We need examples on which to focus. Because focus creates intensity and focus creates power. And goals give us focus. Goals give us focus. If you really want to produce something in your life that'll take you to the next level, can I give you some keys? I'm going to tell you this. You got a sheet of paper. You write down 10 goals that you really want to see accomplished in your life in the next 12 months. And you put today's date on it. If you really want to do it, let me give you some, some simple steps of how to turn a dream into a reality. Just simple steps. Turn the dream into a reality. You pray and you seek the heart and the purposes of God for you. Don't ask for God for anything that's not for you. Pray and seek the heart and purposes of God for you. Pray and seek the heart and purposes of God for you. If, God's, if it's not God's purpose for you, you don't want it. Pray and seek the heart and purposes of God for you. Number two, write it down. Write it down. A goal must be written. You can't just have goals in your head. Write it down. If you think it, ink it. Put it in writing. Write it down. Pray and seek God, but then write it down. Number three, set a deadline. Every goal has a deadline. If it, if it doesn't have a deadline, it's not a goal. It's a wish. It's, it's every goal has a deadline. Goals give us focus. Set a deadline. Set a deadline. Set a deadline. Number four, make a list of everything that you need to do to accomplish it. Make a list of everything that you need to do in order to accomplish it. Number five, organize that list into a checklist. Organize the list into a checklist. You've got to give yourself a, a means of accountability to say, okay, have I called uh, the, uh, the Secretary of State to incorporate my business? Have I checked with a publisher to be able to figure out how do I publish this particular thing? Uh, have I sent out letters uh, for partners who are going to help me in this thing? Organize the list into a checklist. Here's number five, uh, or number six rather, uh, take action, take action. Take action. You can't just have a goal and say, I'm a one day, I'm going to do that. No, no, no. Take action. Take action. And number seven, do something every day towards your goal. Do something every day towards your goals. Do something every day. You pray and you seek the heart and the purposes of God for you. Write it down. Set a deadline. Make up a list of everything that you need to do to accomplish it. Organize the list into a checklist. Take action and do something every day towards your goal. This is what you want, whatever you want to see happen in the next 12 months. In the next 12 months. You just write down 10 goals. And, and here's, a, here's an important key with that. Write it down in the present tense. Write it down in the present tense. Write it down. God says, I am that I am. Present tense. I am that I am. It's not what I'm going to do. You No, no, no. When you write goals, it's not I am going to. You don't push it to the future. You got to bring it. Now faith is. Right now. Now faith is. Write it in the present tense. I am wealthy. 
I'm living in my dream house with however many bedrooms and however many bathrooms and however many fireplaces you want. Just, just start. I'm, living, I'm driving my Lamborghini. But now, 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 couple it with this. I'm walking in righteousness. I'm hungry for God's word. I'm serving God's people. I'm winning souls for Christ. I'm sharing my testimony. I'm serving the poor. Now, see, have it, have it. it, it it's all right to have the, the big stuff just for you, but have the stuff that's designed to be through you as well. Have the stuff designed to be through you as well. Don't get so locked up. It's not about you. It's just through you. And he said, listen, we get bread from Jesus and fish from Jesus, but we're supposed to give it to the multitude. And when you finish serving them, guess what? There were 12 baskets left over. The people that they serve got a piece of fish and a piece of bread, but the one serving it got a whole basket. They got a bushel of fish. They came home. Are you listening to me? If you let God, I'm just telling you, God will bless you when you make yourself a blessing. If you say, God, you can trust me. You can trust me, Jesus, because I'm going to be a bless. I'm going to bless other folks. And I'm just telling you, God can't make you a blessing and then you have needs yourself where you can't even barely eat. You can't feed the poor when you try to eat yourself. He's got to bless you with more than you need in order for you to be a blessing. So you just pray that prayer. Pray that prayer and, and set your goals and, and, and you'll zero in on a power and a focus of God in your life. And people will see your good works. And, and the moment that it happens, don't say this because I, I, I did all the right things. I pulled all the right strings and I, I, I built a fantastic team around me. You better point him back to Jesus. You better say it's by the grace of God. By the grace of God, even if God blesses you to get it, it takes the Holy Ghost and wisdom to be able to even keep it. To even be able to be a good steward over it. Are you listening to me? You remember the term focus. Focus. Focus literally means fireplace. Focus literally means fireplace. It literally means fireplace. Fireplace. It's a place of focus. It's a focal point. It's a focal point. And remember this principle that the areas of your focus are the areas of your reward and the areas of your neglect are the areas of your pain if you neglect your marriage it will give you pain if you neglect your health of your body it will give you pain if you neglect your spiritual life and devotion to God your life will give you pain what the areas of your neglect are the areas of your pain but the areas of your focus are the areas of your reward if you focus on your marriage your marriage will get better if you focus on your money your money will get better are you listening? Whatever you focus on, you make it better. Focus makes it better. Focus makes it better. Focus makes it better. The areas of your focus are the areas of your reward. Focus on your children and your, your household will get better. Focus, focus, focus on your spiritual development. Focus on your devotion to God. Focus on your prayer life. Focus, focus, focus. Whatever you want to make better, focus on it. Focus on your health. Focus on your family. Focus on your friends. Focus on your occupation. Focus on your growth and your development. Whatever you focus on, the areas of your focus are the areas of your reward and the areas of your neglect are the areas of your pain. Whatever pains you, there's been some neglect. You let your house run down. You see stuff that's happening and you're going to do it another time. It gets worse. Focus on it. Focus on it. But if you neglect it, it will cause you pain. But he brings us into a good place. And I just want you to realize this. Just ask yourself this question. What has deteriorated in my life because of neglect? Think about that. What has deteriorated in my life because of neglect? If you neglect relationships, they will deteriorate. If you neglect relationships, they will deteriorate. If you neglect your health, it will deteriorate. If you neglect your spiritual uh, feeding, your spiritual life will deteriorate. What has deteriorated in your life because of neglect? And here's the principle that I want you to understand is that we are stewards of whatever God gives us. We are stewards, not owners, stewards of whatever God gives us. Don't just be a recipient, be a steward. Don't just be a recipient, be a, be, a, be a steward. We're recipients of time. So be a steward of time. Be a steward of whatever God gives. He gives us time. Steward your time. Uh, he gives us truth. Steward the truth that God gives you. He gives you relationships, a spouse, children, friends. Put their... Uh, 
their lives into a better place by encouraging them. But when you speak negative words, you destroy and put the fire out in your relationships. You have to steward the relationships that God gives you. Steward your health. Steward your energy. Energy is a resource. It's a limited resource. You only have so much energy. That's why you can't fool with everybody. Because you'll use up all of your energy over here and now you can't do what God told you to do over here. You have to steward your energy. You only have a limited amount of energy before you get tired and worn out and have to lay down and get in the bed. You have to steward your energy. You have to steward your money. You have to steward the vision that God gives you, the dreams that God gives you. And you have to steward the Holy Spirit who's on the inside of us. He's a gift. He gives us the gift of the Holy Ghost. Steward him. Steward him. Steward him. So that you don't grieve him, that you honor him, that you follow the promptings that he brings into your heart. And may I say this to you, it's time to, to stop looking ahead for what is next and to start looking back for what is important. And so many people are so busy being forward focused that they're looking to see what's next, what's next, what's new, what's new, what's trending, what's trending. Start looking back so that you see what's important. Start looking back. And may I say this to you, that whenever you begin to forget who you are, and whenever you begin to forget what is important and valuable in your life, let your mind, hear me carefully, let your mind go back to the heroes that you loved and respected in your heart. Go back, go back to them. And whoever was a hero that inspired you to live right for God. Go back to the people that inspired you to be successful, to be a good student, to, to be able to excel and give things your best. The very individuals that inspired you. Who are your heroes? Remember your heroes when you forget who you are. Amen. If you start coming into question, who am I? Remember your heroes. Remember the people that have spoken into your life and laid foundations and encourage you. If you ever become befuddled as to who you are and what you're supposed to be doing remember your heroes remember your heroes remember your heroes it could be a teacher at school it could be a coach it could be a, a you know a, a, a mentor it could be a preacher it could be somebody that has worked with you and and helped you to be able to grow a consultant remember your heroes it could be somebody from the Bible who's already gone that was a hero to you. Remember them. It could be a grandmother, grandfather. Remember your heroes if you ever become convoluted as to who you are and what you're called to do. 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 6 and 7 in, in the Passion Translation, it says, I'm writing to encourage you to fan into flame and rekindle the fire. Remember, fire gives us light, it gives us warmth, and it gives us ambiance. Rekindle the fire of the spiritual gift God imparted to you when I laid my hands upon you. For God will never give you the spirit of fear, but the Holy Spirit who gives you mighty power, love, and self-control. My God, you ought to screenshot that. You ought to meditate on that all this week. And, and listen, realize that, that he, he didn't give you the spirit of fear, but of love. It's the, whole, the Holy Spirit who gives you the mighty power, love, and self-control. Mighty power, love, and self-control. That's what he gives us. He said, I'm encouraging you to fan into flame. Fan into flame. If you're going to keep a fire going, you have to give it oxygen. It's got to have oxygen. If it doesn't have any oxygen, if there's not the breath of God on it, it's going to die out. It's going to die out, so you, you, it's got to have God's breath on it. And, and listen, I want to encourage you, as a final thought, to reignite your passion for your purpose. Reignite, reignite. That's what he's saying. Go back and stir up the gift of God that was given to you by the impartation. Whatever has been given to you, go back to that thing that had you excited at first. Go back to that. Go back to your first love. Go back to the passions, the gift, the elementary calling that God placed in you. You never leave your foundations. You build up from your foundation, but you never leave it. A, a tree never leaves its roots. It stays connected. And so you have to reflect on, on what makes you cry and what makes you feel good about yourself. Reflect on that. The power of, of reflecting. If you want to reignite something, reflect. Reflect. Reflect on it. Reflect. Reflect. Remember, passion is pain. The word passion literally means pain. Whatever you're passionate about, it, it, it pains you. Reflect on what makes you cry. 
Reflect on what makes you feel good about yourself. Reflect on it. Reflect on it. Then connect with other people who help you to see that you make a difference to them. Reflect and then connect. Reflect and connect. Connect with other people who help you see how you make a difference to them. Connect with other people who help you see how you make a difference to them. That will reignite your fire. Here's a third thing. Respect the unction of the Holy Spirit that moves you to action. Reflect, connect, respect. Respect the unction of the Holy Spirit that moves you to action. Respect the Holy Ghost. Respect Him. The best way that you show respect is that you obey Him. You respect your mama, you got to do what she tells you to do. You respect your daddy, you, you, yes sir. It's, it's not but, it's not, uh, 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 you, you respect his obedience. Here's the fourth thing, re- deflect from anything that is distracting you from your purpose. If you want to go back and be passionate about your purpose, deflect from anything that is distracting you from your purpose. I hope you're seeing a pattern here. You reflect, you connect, you respect, You deflect, deflect from anything, turn from anything that is distracting you from your purpose. Put your phone down, sign off your computer, focus your full attention uh, on the task that is currently assigned to you and be fully present, be fully in the moment, deflect from the distraction, deflect, turn it off, turn off your notification, deflect from the stuff that's wasting your time. Time is a limited resource, you have to steward it. And then here's the final one. Reject any thought or feeling that is inconsistent with God's plan for you and how he sees you. Reject any thought. You really want to rekindle your fire? You got to reflect. You got to connect. You got to respect. You got to deflect. And you got to reject any thought, any feeling that is inconsistent with God's plan to you and how God sees you. And as you reignite, you're most likely need to reorganize some things in your life it's really about reorganizing in a wonderful way I can't tell you just just this week I was out jogging walking doing a combination of the two and uh, coming toward me I saw a teenager And he had a humongous stack of books that he was carrying and a basketball. And I watched him drop them all. He just just dropped them. And then he stooped down to pick them up and started again and he dropped them again. And I'm, I'm coming toward him. And I said, Lord, just let me be a light. Let me be a light. I'm coming toward him. I can see things from vantage points that he can't see. I got a wisdom because I've been a student and I know what it's like to carry a lot of books. It's it's not what you carry that breaks you, it's how you carry it. And I stopped the young man and, and I stooped down to help him. He's got a huge stack of books. And I said, here, you take this and you hold this like this. And you take this and you hold that like that. And I said, now I'm going to take your basketball. And I put the basketball on it. And now he's able to carry the load. And he says, sir, thank you. Thank you. I didn't give him anything but a perspective. I showed him a better way to carry what he kept fumbling. And there's a whole generation that's trying to juggle so many things. They got, they got too much stuff going on. And they need somebody who has already walked this walk and has carried books and studied books and understand the difference between books and basketball and and knows the balance of life. And it's a delicate balance, but I've walked it. And so I know how to help a person arrange it who keeps fumbling and dropping stuff because you're trying to juggle too many things at one time. It's about positioning and knowing how to carry the load. And sometimes it's not that the load is too much. It's just in how you carry it. And God will place people on the journey. And I'm here to tell you that the lighthouses were only placed in strategic dangerous places. 
So you don't even recognize a lighthouse until you come into a transition of life. Because if I've been doing this all of my life, I know how to do that. But now when I come to a juncture, I need a lighthouse to show me now because I'm coming in another territory. And everybody that is listening to me right now, you're at an age now that you've never been before. You don't have any experience in the future. You got experience in the past. But what if God is shifting you from where you have been and what you've been doing and how you do it? And you will walk and you will come to dangerous places and stand there and wonder, should I go back, should I go to the left or should I go to the right? But when you will walk with me, I will place those along your journey at critical junctures in your life to give you the guidance that you need to safely make your journey, says the Lord. If you trust him, trust him, trust him. Sometimes you receive a lighthouse and other times you are the lighthouse. Are you listening? Sometimes you have to look for another lighthouse. And they always distinguish the lighthouses. Some of them had stripes, some of them had different colors, or they put a different crown on one to, to help the folks that were traveling to see the one that was actually closest to them and to help them to be guided on their journey. And you're designed to be a lighthouse to somebody who has lost their way and somebody who's carrying something and they keep dropping it and they keep messing up relationship after relationship after relationship and all that you need to do is to make an adjustment and say listen brother you need to die to yourself sister you need to die to yourself so your marriage can live in the name of Jesus my God we help them to carry this thing in a brand new way to say you've been carrying hurt and anger because you keep rehearsing in your mind what they said and what they did let it go 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 so you can be healed in the name of Jesus I don't know who I'm talking to today but I just feel God in this place I feel God speaking to his people out of the bowels of compassion that God loves his people God is caring for us in a wonderful way and I just pray that the light that God has put in this old vessel is shining out to you and that you're able to see clearly as a beacon light is coming out that you say God I'm understanding now I'm growing now I'm getting it father I'm getting it I'm getting it I'm getting you at a new juncture right now and you need those that have gone before you in the name of Jesus and I want to call those folks that are out of fellowship with God to meet me here at this altar this is a new time this is a new season. Don't wait for anybody else. If you're out of, out of pocket, you've been lost, come to the lighthouse. This is the best lighthouse that I know is the cross of Christ. It's the cross of Jesus Christ. It's the cross of Christ. Come on, come on, come on to the cross. Come on. You've been walking around in darkness, fumbling, stumbling, falling, dropping the stuff. You keep dropping the, what God put in your hand. You keep messing it up, losing job after job after job. And you wonder what in the world is wrong with me. You keep destroying relationship. And you wonder, you keep blaming them. And, and listen, that's an adjustment that you got to make in you. Today is your day. It's your day to say, God, I want you to do this thing in me. I want you to transform my life. I want you to make me new, God. Make me new, make me new, make me new, make me new. I need you, Jesus. I need you, Jesus. I need you, Jesus. I need you, I need you, I need you, I need you, Jesus. I need you, Jesus. In this year, in this new week, in this new year, in this new season in my life, some of you is not just because this is a new year, this is a new season. This is a new shift for you. You turn you're coming into a place and some things are breaking off of your life. Shackles are breaking off of your life. Old mindsets, feelings of unworthiness and guilt, shame that has come on your life. I feel the blood of Jesus washing and cleansing. He didn't just turn the light on and didn't come with a broom and a rag. He came to do some cleansing on the inside of you to wash you of every dirty thought, of every lustful image that you've ever looked at. If you need to be down here, get down here to the altar. Those of you that are online right now in the name of Jesus, I challenge you to make an altar right where you are and say, God, do something on the inside of me. I lay myself before you, God, here on the ground. It was interesting that that young man that kept dropping his book, he happened to be on his knees. He was on his knees trying to pick it up. 
and I stooped down to come to his level and to help him to be able to organize what he was carrying but couldn't carry because he didn't have a perspective and a revelation of the Holy Ghost. But God wants to be able to transform something in your life and in your world. And I implore you right now, I implore you right now, if you want to give your heart to Jesus, if you're online, I want to encourage you to text 770-874-8400. Just text it now. Text JOIN, W-O-F. We'll reach out to you. Everybody needs to be connected to a local church. And I want to give you an opportunity right now to be able to do that right where you are. You need to be in connection with something that's going to lay foundations in you that is solid, that is time-tested, and that points you to Jesus Christ. Jesus the Christ. Jesus the Christ. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the lighthouse. He's the source of the light. He's the source of the light. We're just carriers of the light. He lives in us. We've invited him in our hearts and then the very one that brought us out of darkness, now his light shines to us and we become a light to other confused people and show them saying, this is the way, walk you in it. This is the way, walk in it. This is the way, walk in it. This is the way, walk in it. I want to pray for these in the name of Jesus. Stretch your hand toward these folks. Father, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, we plead the blood, we plead the blood, we plead the blood. Thank you, Father, for the light today that is shown into their souls, shown into their lives. Those that are watching, Father, online, God, I pray in the name of Jesus, thank you for just shining light into their dark situation, shining light into their confusion, shining light into their mess, God, but not only shining to expose what was there, God, but now sending the precious blood of Jesus, that life-changing, efficacious, powerful blood that washes, that cleanses, that sets a right, that begins to restore, that gives us the gift of righteousness by the sacrifice of the perfect sacrifice that was made by Jesus the Christ. We thank you for him today. Thank you for what you're doing in their lives. Thank you God for what you're doing in their hearts right now to begin to organize the things that's just been a mess God that you come in you turn the light on God and you show them where everything is designed to be and that that they have to get rid of and that that needs to be better organized I thank you God for a revelation of the Holy Spirit that begins to heal the hurt that begins to restore the brokenhearted those that have been damaged those whose self-esteem has been totally shattered thank you God that you will turn their ashes into beauty in the name of Jesus Father, I pray in the name of Jesus as we do warfare that these are your sons and your daughters, God. May you now, Lord, let the cleansing power of the Holy Ghost be experienced on the inside of them, God. Experience on the inside of them. Give them a revelation of you. Give them a revelation of you. Reignite them, Father, to the very purpose for which they are born and the gift that you've placed on the inside of them. Father, I pray that you'll even bring those to their light, that people around them will see something different in them. Put a love and a zeal in their hearts, Father, to tell everybody that they meet who they have met and what you've done in their life, God, that they might declare the wonderful works of Jesus as they've been redeemed, God, that they will go and say so. As they've been redeemed, that they will say so and become a lighthouse every place that they go in the grocery store. I pray on the job in their neighborhood, God, use them for your glory. Use them for your glory. Use them for your glory in the name of Jesus and we'll give you the glory for it. Amen. We want to take you to a place of further prayer. We've got some literature that we want to put into your hands. If you'll turn and go here right to my left and to your right, go right to this way. And if anybody wants to join the church and become a member, you can just go right and follow these folks right here. We're so glad that everybody needs a church home. And on this first Sunday of the year, we invite you, we invite you, we invite you to come and to be connected with us. As, as members of Word of Faith Family Worship Cathedral so that you can be connected to a local body of believers that will help you to come establish, firmly establish and strengthen in the things of God. How many of you are glad you came to the house of the Lord today? I'm so glad. Thank you for those of you that tuned in today. I'm so grateful. I'm so incredibly grateful, so incredibly grateful, and I'm so thankful to what God is doing. I just have a note of victory in my spirit that this year is going to be a turnaround year. Yes, it is. This is not going to be like 2021, which was a continuation of all of the craziness that was in the world. I just was sharing with my wife on the way here today that death is not cessation. Death is not cessation. Death is separation. We start dying when we get separated. Before people divorce, they separate. Death is separation. 
Divorce is the death of a relationship. Death is separation. It's separation. Pandemic has separated people who so needed each other. And our suicide rates have, go, rates have gone to have broken records. Domestic violence, broken records. Homicides, broken records. Separation is death. Death is separation. We're a family. We're a family. We're the family of God. We're the people of God. He's called us. That's, that's something that we experience in the fellowship and the economy of the church, the body of God's people. It's not about a building. It is about a body that gathers in the same way that what makes my family a family is not my house, but it is the fact that we are gathered, whether we are gathered in a restaurant. Are you listening? Whether we are gathered in, a, in, a, in an assembly hall. What makes us family is who we are, not where we are. It is the who. It is the fact that we are connected and that we see each other because we bring something one to another. And so this is a turnaround year. And you're going to see the favor of God come in unprecedented measures in 2022. There's going to be a doubling of some things that God is going to do in restoring some things back to his people. I'm just telling you, this is going to be a blessed, blessed year. It's going to be a blessed, blessed year. You get ready. You watch it. You'll see God's unprecedented favor in your life. I'm just telling you, God's taking us someplace. It's going to be absolutely good. 2022 is going to be a good, good year. It's going to be good because of God.